Well, here's something that, well, the numbers are just kind of weird. That's okay. Just work them out like you know how to do. I have an order for a heparin. Now, heparin is given in all kinds of ways. It's given just as a shot. You've probably done some heparin calculations early. It's plain, simple dosage calculations where you may be ordered to give, you know, 5,000 units of heparin in the syringe. So this is different. We're going to have some heparin dissolved in our IV fluid. And we're going to give an infusion, dripping it into the patient slowly. But the order is like this, 1,200 units per hour. I'm going to give the patient 1,200 units every hour that goes by. The thing that's kind of weird is some vastly large numbers. What have I got? I've got 25,000 units. Hey, by the way, a U is a symbol for units. You're not supposed to write those yourself, but you'll see them written. I got 25,000 units of heparin dissolved in 0.5 liters of normal saline. Just like we, we've been doing in the video lectures up above, write the order in the following form. 1,200 units. Now you can write units in doing your homework, okay? That's not a violation of federal law. Uh, that's per hour, 1,200 units per hour. Well, how strong is this stuff? I've got, wow, that whopping big number, 25,000 units is dissolved in 0 0.5 liters. Now, a couple of things to remember here. First, what is going to cancel out? Units. But what about this? That's liters. You always, with IV stuff, need the answer in milliliters. I need milliliters per hour. That's liters. Well, I need to convert my liters into milliliters. I can do it now, do it later, whatever. It doesn't. Let's do it now. Recall now, how do you convert 0.5 liters into milliliters? You just move your decimal three places to the right. Boom, boom, boom. And so this becomes 500 milliliters. Now, you better know that already. If that was something brand new to you, you're way behind and need some help. That becomes this. So now whatever it's this times this, then divided by this, and the answer will be in milliliters per hour. But more than ever, all these zeros, let me say this yet for the 14th time, the more zeros there are to punch into your calculator, the more chance you've got of making a mistake by punching in the wrong number of zeros. So if you cancel out a bunch of zeros now, you'll have a less chance of making a mistake. You have one, two, three, four zeros on the top, one, two, three on the bottom. It's always a one-to-one -one ratio. Whatever we do to the top, the bottom demands equal treatment. So I can cancel, well, let's see, these two right there, these two, and watch this now. This zero cancels this zero. It doesn't matter which one on the top I do, as long as I cancel three on the bottom and three on the top. And what's left? Smaller numbers, 120 times five divided by 25. So with my handy dandy fancy calculator, I do 120 times five divided by 25. The answer is 24. And I punch a number boop, boop, into my infusion pump or whatever that little machine is I've got. And it's all taken care of. Now, if you had done, just to prove it to you, the whole number, 1,200 times 500, then divided by 25,000. I get the same answer, see? But it's better if you cancel out the zeros. If the canceling zeros gives you problems, don't do it. It's just handy, it's quicker, well, it saves finger motion, and it saves error. So, looking good? Okay, I'm, I'm looking good, I think. How's that? Well, yeah, I know what you think.